This is the reason we're tied up. Top of the fourth inning. First pitch, Rachel Roop saw from Brooke Yanez. She takes it over the wall. Out there in left center field. And that tied the game at one apiece. And that's where it still stands as we go to the seventh. And as fate would have it, Rachel Roop's going to lead off the inning. That was her 14th home run of the year, her seventh in the last 12 games. I mean, this is the player that could put Liberty in front. Yeah, and just competing, and you can just see she wants this for her team and the ability to answer back. UCLA, the number two national seed, suffered arguably the most stunning upset in this tournament's history. Lost to Grand Canyon. 3-2 to two yesterday. Now in jeopardy, very serious jeopardy of getting knocked out of the tournament in two games on their home field. Yeah, and I bet, you know, they didn't think that they would be in this position, but again, when you go through a season, you, as a coach, Coach Inoue Perez wants to make sure that they're battle-tested and ready for any situation or moment, so these moments want to rise to the occasion. You're talking about a UCLA program that last year went to its 31st Women's College World Series and seventh in a row. I mean, they've got their own parking spots in Oklahoma <laughs> City. And to not get out of their own regional, that would be something. And the leadoff hitter is aboard. Roop walks to start the seventh. Yanez walked Howard back in the sixth inning, but got out of the inning thanks to a double play that Caroline Hudson lined into. Faramo has been warming up for a while. She continues to do so. As Rachel Crane gets ready to stand in here. Good butt. Bad throw. Bobble, she's safe. Anna Vines couldn't make the catch on a weak throw by Woolery. And when you talk about things being the difference, these are what we're talking about. Error on Anna Vines. But you got to take care of the ball and take care of the little things, especially in these moments. So two on and nobody out as they go to the review monitor. And they'll be looking at this in Pittsburgh. The call on the field was out or is safe at first base. So we'll see if this is overturned. And UCLA just trying to contest that she had control of the ball. I think she's going to be out. Yeah. Still, it, it kind of speaks to the way things have gone this weekend for UCLA. Just nothing coming easy. Right, right. I mean, big call if it's overturned, but still, too, when, when you talk about momentum and things of that nature and, you know, making sure you take care of the little things. Here comes the call. And she is out. Still a really nice sacrifice by Rachel Crane to put the go-ahead run in scoring position. Absolutely. And just solid softball 101, making sure, you know, she's a big hitter as well. And making sure she squares, get that ball down. The priority is get my teammates 60 feet closer to home plate. Jordan Willery going like, all right, yeah, hey, see, no big deal. <laughs> yeah, we got this, we got this. <laughs> I've been here before. Yeah, I'm a freshman, but I know, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Rupert second, and here's Fortner now. 0 for 2. First runner tonight for the Flames in scoring position. Can they get her home? Ground ball foul. Meg Fortner. 
transfer from Jacksonville State, third team all conference this year, has 100 career runs batted in in her time at Jacksonville State and Liberty. She's had a nice career. Now, can she get the biggest run batted in of her career? The 0 1. Swung out and missed. There's something extra there from Brooke Yanez. Yeah, and you can really see Yanez is laser focused tonight. I mean, she is honed in, hitting her spots. Yes, granted, she gave up the home run in the fourth, but since then, she's been laser focused. Popped up, and it's going to get out of play. How about the antelopes of Grand Canyon peeking over the center field wall, taking in the drama <laughs> here in L.A.? You know, they're, uh, they're getting ready for the game coming up later tonight. Another elimination game. Winner of this one will play GCU. 0-2 pitch. Now 1-2. and two. UCLA wants to win this one and get back at Grand Canyon after yesterday's big disappointment. Seeing who they get to play. Swung out and missed. Yanez got it. Two down. Second strikeout for Fortner tonight. And this was such a great setup by Yanez. Pitch before going up and in. But this next pitch going on that rise ball in the outside corner and gets her swinging. With a lot of personality. Yes, <laughs> she is definitely the energy of this team. And the other night when they were practicing, they were walking in from the outfield and she's just singing and screaming. Definitely the heartbeat of this team. Sophomore out of Miami. And Yanez starts her away. Machado hitting in Kirsten's spot. Kirsten tonight, a couple of strikeouts swinging against Yanez. So, Dot Richardson is going to roll the dice here with the second year player. Doesn't have any home runs on the year, but more than capable. During that upset win of Clemson, it was Machado that got the rally started. Clemson was ranked number six in the country at the time. So Dot Richardson is hoping that you know, Machado can have a similar effect on this game tonight. Yes, and all it does, all it takes is one. Go ahead, run, and Roop is at second base. Swung out and fouled off, just off the end of the bat. Count now two and two. Looking ahead to the UCLA seventh. It's at the bottom of the order. Seven, eight, and nine. Vines, Powell, and Mayonia. They would love to walk it off in front of their home crowd and get on to a rematch with Grand Canyon. Two outs, the two, two. Again fouled off. Nothing else. Machado is making Giannis sweat. L.A. is the entertainment capital of the world. Have you heard of this? Hey, this is a lot of drama here happens. tonight. Yes. <laughs> Again, the 2-2. Full count. And Wilson is on deck. Or at least scheduled to hit. I think can drop on the outside corner. Field base 
gets him, trying to score his roof. Here comes the throw. No, she's safe. Alyssa Garcia immediately wanting a review. Machado delivers what looks like the go-ahead run batted in, but they're going to go to the monitor. Machado hits this ball hard, but Megan Grant just savvy comes up with the throw, and the throw was on time, but the tag is what's questionable, and it looked like Garcia may have gotten her on her shoulder as opposed to doing that vertical tag and tagging straight down on the plate. It mm. Looks like her hand might have gotten in there. Well, the call on the field by the home plate umpire, Bill Plant, and I mean, he is right on top of it, was safe. And the call on the field is presumed correct unless there is indisputable video evidence. Casey Machado, a pinch hit, single to left. And it is the go-ahead run. Liberty leads it two to one here in the seventh. <laughs> Machado, man. But that was a quality at bat. I mean, laying off those rise balls, waiting for something down in the zone. Because you know that Giannis is going to go back to that drop ball at some point. And uh, she capitalized on that drop ball and nice timing. What a thrill for the sophomore. And a dejected UCLA dugout. Well, this is Mary Claire Wilson's spot in the Liberty lineup, and Dot Richardson is going to use another pinch hitter as UCLA is going to make a pitching change. Uh, Brooke Yanez, what a great job. Six and two-thirds. Just two runs, three hits. A couple of walks, but struck out nine. Still, she's on the hook for the loss as they turn it to Megan Faramo, the Pac-12 Pitcher of the Year for the second year in a row. She'll try to get one more out here in the seventh and hope the Bruins have a comeback in them in the bottom of the inning. Right. And to be honest, she definitely battled tonight. I mean, she had some good stuff, and I mean, nine Ks on the day. Obviously, yes, you know, two pitches that she probably wished she could take back. But did an incredible job on the mound tonight. Soto to pinch hit. Alexis Soto, sophomore, backup catcher for Liberty. She'll take strike one from Megan Faramo. Ramo took the loss yesterday. Could this be the second year in a row that a number two national seed doesn't advance at a regionals? You'll remember last year it was Florida State that didn't get out of Tallahassee. Could it be the Bruins that get knocked out? You know, we were talking about the parody of college softball. Dot Richardson had that great quote earlier that we talked about. I mean, things are changing in this sport. You, you, you just have great talent all over the country now. Weak ground ball to third. It's off. Sid at third base, and she doesn't have a play. Kind of rolled up Sid's arm. She didn't have a throw. And now there are two on with two outs. That's going to be an error. And now Savannah Woodard will get a chance to drive in another one for Liberty.
in the dirt. Nice stop by Alyssa Garcia. And now Dot Richardson wants time, wants to talk with her hitter, Savannah Woodard. Junior from Alabama, who came from the Crimson Tide. Getting some words of wisdom from Dot Richardson. Woodard was a big part of that Women's College World Series team for Alabama back in 2021. Veteran with a lot of experience. And now Richardson also wants a pinch runner at first base, perhaps, or maybe for Machado. Yeah, it's going to be for Casey Machado. That's Lily Hydorn. One ball and no strikes on Woodard. Liberty with the go ahead run driven in by pinch hitter Casey Machado here in the seventh. They want an appeal. Brandon Bloom, the third base umpire, called upon. She did not go around. Fifty two wins for UCLA against six losses. They've lost their last two. Fifty two wins the most in the country. And they could be going out in two games here in the national tournament. Three one pitch. Slap oh, right into the glove of Sid. So she makes up for the air and gets UCLA into the dugout. Can the Bruins do it? Last chance for UCLA, the number two national seed. One to tie, two to walk it off. Casey Machado, the hero of the moment for Liberty with that RBI single as a pinch hitter. Liberty leads it, going to the bottom of the seventh in L.A. What a difference a day makes for the Liberty Flames. Yesterday against San Diego State, they could hardly do anything right. Had four errors in the field, got shut out seven to nothing. But tonight, uh, they've got UCLA up against the wall, leading 2-1 to one here in the bottom of the seventh. Yeah, it's just a completely different team that we saw from yesterday, and that's the beauty of this game. New day, you have the control to change things. UCLA trying not to have a short stay in their regional. One to tie, two to walk it off. UCLA, the number two national seed, sending Vines to the plate here to lead it off in the seventh. Rachel Sid and Janelle Mayonio, the scheduled hitters. And this is probably the biggest AB in Anna Vines' life and doing your job and being a good leadoff. Finds a fifth-year senior out of Temecula, California. Doesn't want this to be the end of her career. But how about the job Carly Keeney has done in the circle for Liberty tonight? Providence, Kentucky native. Rocks, fires, and hits a strike on the outside corner. Two and one. And I don't know if I agree with that call. And it's a little off the plate. That's upstairs, three balls and a strike. If they can just get it back to the top of the order with some runners on, that's where, you know, Megan Grant 
sits and, and she's had such a good tournament two home runs including one tonight right and strike two full count these two programs Liberty Flames and the UCLA Bruins Flames leaving the Atlantic Sun and joining Conference USA next year. UCLA leaving the Pac-12. They'll join the Big Ten for 2025's softball season. Slap foul. You know, as a lifelong Bruin, your thoughts on leaving the Pac-12 going to the Big Ten? Man, it's, it's a tough one. I mean, I can't imagine choosing to come play at UCLA for the sun and the weather and then having to travel <laughs> back east. <laughs> February, March, it's brutal. Bruins have the rally caps on. Strike called on the outside corner. And Vines goes down. That was the first full count that Keeney had to deal with tonight, and she came through it like a champ. Yeah, and Keeney's been on point with this pitch all night long, and. This one is just definitely too close to take with two strikes, knowing that he had called it earlier. Her AB, but that's, you gotta be swinging at that. Kennedy Powell is gonna re enter for UCLA in the number eight spot with one out. What's at stake? So much. UCLA. Since 2004 national titles, seven trips to the Women's College World Series in Oklahoma City. Two down. Powell retired as Madre comes in and makes a great play. And Kennedy Powell coming out the box, power slapping. But Madre just in the perfect position and making a great catch. UCLA down to its last out. One of the pillars of women's college softball. One out away from going two and Q in the regional. And it all comes down to Jill, Janelle Mayonio. She tries to slap it by the third baseman and can't do it. Goes foul. Mayonio, you'll remember last night, kept the seventh inning going for UCLA against Grand Canyon. Can she do it again? Yeah, she did a great job of extending the game and being able to pass the bat and put the bat at the top of the lineup exactly where the Bruins want to have that bat with Megan Grant. Carly Keeney trying to go the distance. And now the Bruins down to their final strike. Remember the top of the order on deck with Megan Grant. Who drove in the only run for the Bruins tonight with a solo home run in the first inning. The first Bruin to come up to the plate drove it over the wall, but UCLA has done nothing offensively since. Grand Canyon awaits the winner of this one. In our nightcap tonight from Los Angeles. Loser done for the year. The 0-2 pitch to Mayonio. Just got a piece of it to stay alive. Keeney wants to end it here. She wants no part of Megan Grant. Absolutely, and this is exactly who you want to go right at is Janelle Mionio. Again, the 0-2 to third. Ball game. Liberty has won it. And UCLA season comes to a disappointing close here in Los Angeles.
The Liberty Flames, one of the biggest wins in this program's history, too. We said that last night with Grand Canyon. Well, that was really obvious. Maybe a little less obvious here tonight for Liberty, who's had a really good program last couple of decades. But this is a win they're going to remember for a long time in Lynchburg, Virginia. Absolutely. And just how they competed their whole night, stuck together, timely hitting. Carly Keeney, amazing on the mound, just hitting her spots, keeping her team in this game.